All right, so President Xi really had a packed schedule there in the UN. I want to start with his first speech there at the UN. That was at the Sustainable Development Summit there. Mm -hmm. The big announcement coming out from that speech really was the South South Cooperation Fund, right? Two billion U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. And China is going to up the ante to 12 billion U.S. dollars by the year of 2030. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, how is this fund going to allocate it there? And how is this going to promote or generating inclusive economic growth? Let me start with Victor here. Well, first of all, I think uh, President Xi Jinping really uh, raised a very important issue, that is the South South Cooperation. This is actually not a new uh, topic. Uh, uh, Mao Zedong and Deng Xiaoping, for example, in their respective way, all talked about the South South Cooperation. However, now that the world circumstances have changed uh, significantly, and uh, China, even though China is still a developing country, it's already the second largest economy in the world, raising the South-South cooperation has new meaning going forward. And I think China wants to help other develop, uh, developing countries by contributing the resources, as well as sharing with them the expertise and our uh, modus operandi in terms of how to live lift the people out of poverty, how to build up infrastructure, how to uh, really improve uh, productivity in many respects. And I would say that by providing the South-South uh, Fund, it will really enable other developing countries to share what China has learned over the past 37 years or so, and also get a good ride, if not a free ride, on China's experience. This is the mission of that fund, and I hope other developing countries will really take great delight in what China has agreed to offer. Well, is this enough, Mr. Yang? What are perceived as some of the most needed things for those poorest developing countries, and what can China offer in this case? Well, uh, just like economics are always saying, uh, you know, resources are always limited. So the fund is always limited, no enough at all. However, China's appearances are the keys on the development are really uh, valuable things for all developing countries. Look, uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, China was a really poor uh, developing country, even uh, poorer than the existing many of our developing countries. Uh, but now uh, China has got a successful experiences. So I think beside, beyond the funds, experiences expertise, especially some uh, uh, in wide range of uh, knowledge on how to do, uh, as Mr. Gao mentioned, how to develop uh, infrastructure, how to develop uh, education, how to uh, uh, reduce, uh, how to reduce uh, poverty uh, in uh, pragmatic practi ways. So I think uh, the fund could be play a role as a leverage uh, to uh, spread out uh, China's expertise for varied developing countries by common development. I believe the South countries, they say developing country will get uh, uh, more uh, status for the further development. So in short, China's initiative and the contribution by this UN actually uh, input new momentum for the South-South cooperation that will bring about the more prosperous for the all developing countries. But the timing of this is that China itself is going through economic restructuring and the global economy is not at its best. So people are wondering how can China fulfill that commitment while tackling domestic problem is a full plate here, Victor? Well, uh, uh, financial resources is one thing. And, uh, but the other thing which is equally important is that even though China has gained a lot of experiences and uh, many success stories over the past 37 years or so, China has also made our own mistakes. For example, environmental pollution, a lower level of energy efficiency, etc. So what we can share with other developing countries is both our success stories as well as where we have deficiencies. And I think by promoting this South-South Fund, China can really give the true story of the economic transformation in China, both on the positive side, but also in some cases on the negative side. So other developing countries in their drive for modernization, globalization, and industrialization, urbanization, for example, no longer need to repeat what we in China unfortunately made mistakes in. So I think both on the positive side as well as on the negative side, we can share our experiences with uh, developing countries. In terms of the financial resources you talked about, I think this is 
basically just part of the finance which eventually will be made available to the developing countries because eventually the total package will include money from this fund but also uh, financing from the commercial banks and many private equity fund, venture capital fund, etc. may also be very much interested in moving to these countries looking for better investment opportunities to increase the productivity um, in, and efficiency in many of these sectors in the developing countries. Well, this is, of course, a big commitment, but you've got to ask what's in this for China, right? What, what can China get in this in return? Uh, well, uh, uh, let me put it by this way. On one hand, without the common development, any single country, including China, can gain the so-called sustainable uh, development. Uh, in fact, uh, the development, the theme of development has been raised for decades long. But uh, uh, in reality, the world, the international community has not been successful in, the, uh, in this area. So what, why is that? One of the reasons is we have got a larger gap rather than smaller gap than before. Say some of the country uh, has developed quite well. Meanwhile, more countries developed quite poor with uh, such a growing gap. Even the advanced countries began to suffer. So the we are in the world, we are in the global village. So you cannot enjoy your successful development without, without uh, getting the others developed either. So right. uh, for but the reason I'm asking this is because, you know, President Xi Jinping's announcement really was met with enthusiastic applause there at the UN. But in the country here, uh, you're hearing different voices. Oh, yeah, People yeah, yeah, are yeah. wondering uh, what should be taken as priority yeah. by the leadership. You know, they're yeah. saying that this money could be put into domestic problems, like put into education, yeah, yeah. health care, and yeah. solve the uh, poverty alleviation. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's why uh, I, I want to say, uh, say when we were poor, when we were at the low level of development, we received many assistances from outside world. At that time, for example, 40 years ago, we called for the developed country, country the rich country, had the responsibility to contribute to help the poor country's development. Now, we are relatively rich. We got uh, some uh, resources, uh, then we returned to the developing country. So that's right. what we've received. Now right. we, we gave the other countries. Let's also take a look at how this is being received by the global stage. Now, uh, let's take a look at global media. What are they are saying about President Xi Jinping's UN speech? Now, his commitment to establish a two billion South-South cooperation fund promoted by, promoted, prompted a AFP to draw a connection between this and China's growing global role. Uh, meanwhile, the BBC also zeroed in on this key commitment, saying that it suggested China's willingness to take on uh, more responsibilities uh, to go with this increasing power and influence. So my question here is, Victor, uh, do you agree with them, what they say there, uh, that China is taking more of a leadership role in this? Oh, definitely. China is the biggest uh, developing country and the second largest economy in the world. And in a few years' time, it's widely expected that the overall size of the Chinese economy will be ahead of the United States in many, many respects. So the global leadership role for China is increasing, and it's already a fait accompli. And I think uh, other countries, including both developing countries as well as developed countries, are looking up to this leadership role that China may exercise increasingly going forward. Now coming back to your previous question, I would say philosophically speaking, by China helping other developing countries, it's not just charity, it's just not sacrifices, it's not just waste of you know, very uh, important financial resources. Mm -hmm. I would say by helping other southern developing countries, it is helping China in the fundamental sense of the word because by helping others and sharing our experiences with other developing countries, China actually can benefit, mainly because the more development there will be in the other developing countries, the more business opportunities may be generated, and right. the Chinese companies, etc., may also have more business participation All in right. these countries. So it's a win-win situation for China and other to, developing countries. Right. I want to also get to uh, President Xi's other speech at the Women's Summit. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, he really stressed the importance, uh, the intricate nature of women's development and socioeconomic development here in China. He talked about how to promote women's career here in the 
the country. Uh, so we're in reality, how's China doing on that front? Well, uh, Xi Jinping made an initiative uh, about the women development or, or he raised the women issue as uh, one of the key issues for the sustainable development uh, because of two reasons. On one hand, China has got, uh, uh, got a lot of uh, successful experience and expertise about that, especially since the Beijing Declaration uh, was issued 20 years ago, uh, China made uh, greater efforts on improvement of women's social status and women's development. We've got uh, greater success, and China want to share the, the successful uh, stories with the world. On the other hand, in general, uh, women development remain, uh, remain be behind, uh, for, uh, falling behind the social and economic development uh, as a whole. So that's why she uh, cut to point by saying, uh, women development should be uh, at the same pace with the social and economic development. That is the key problem in the sustainable development. Uh, so under China's initiative of the Women's Summit, I think uh, China has uh, uh, bring uh, fresh, uh, fresh air in this uh, very challenging issue. Right. Uh, and also on Monday, President Xi gave this huge speech addressing you in assembly, talk about critical issues, uh, it illustrate China's stance, really. But my question is, can his message cut through to especially Western audiences? Because we have very different ideologies. We have a different understanding about democracy, human rights, uh, the relationship between state and society, a variety of issues. So how can these differences be overcome? Well, normally, you know, there are many people who believe that the General Assembly discussions at the United Nations are basically just discussions, you know, it's rarely get translated into our, uh, actions or action plans, uh, not only for certain countries which are directly involved, but especially for the global uh, stage. However, if China really takes a very active participation in these major initiatives, and especially if President Xi Jinping, the top leader in China, really shows a personal interest and wants to be in the driver's seat to deliver all these promises, then it changes the landscape. I would say when China is fully committed to do these initiatives, not only by itself, but also sharing its experiences and coordinating actions with other developing countries and also with developed countries, especially on climate change issues and gender equality is so important if you look around the world there are many many places where the women's rights are being very much discriminated so it is time for action and it is very fortunate that that President Xi Jinping is showing his personal interest in, is mobilizing resources in China to drive for deliverables and I hope this will really change the general perception of the United Nations. A new vitality, a new sense of urgency or even sense of crisis will be instilled into the framework of the United Nations or so the General Assembly discussions will no longer just be for discussions for discussion purposes. It will be very much followed with very well-defined, very well-executed actions.